Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today we're just going to be doing some procedural blurring, which is a very simple node setup that a lot of people use in Blender, but we're going to add some functionality to that. So in case you do not know what I'm talking about, uh, we have an image here, which is blurred, but uh, you can see we can actually control the blur. And uh, the thing about it is that it's not actual blurring because you can't really do that procedurally, but really what we're doing is just distorting our image. So if you go very close, you have this very ripply water effect. And we're going to make a kind of node setup and, in fact, a node group that lets us control how blurred this is with both image textures and also anything else that is procedural. And by the way, this tutorial is also live. So there are people in the chat being like, well, what is this tutorial voice? But OK, let's get into it. So I'm going to start up a new Blender scene. And I'm going to be using version 2.81, but you can use pretty much any version for a while back that has these nodes. And let's go full screen so you guys don't hate me. OK. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to get rid of everything in the default scene and just replace it with a plane. And this is where we're going to put our gradient texture, our image, and then just blur it. So you can blur whatever you want. And here's basically the trick. So when you have your plane here, we're going to go to the shading workspace and create a new material for this. And we are going to start off with doing this to an image texture, but then we can also do it to anything, including a, I don't know, a gradient sphere or something. So let's start off by importing importing an image texture the same way you would without like any kind of BSDF or anything. And we are going to do this with just this image that, you know, I've been using for a while as my live stream thumb. And we want to take this and blur it. And basically the idea is, again, we're going to distort the texture coordinates. So what we're going to do is right now, if you hit Control T on this, when you have this node selected, again, make sure you go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and make sure you have Node Wrangler enabled to do that. You need Node Wrangler. And then you can hit Control T. You can you you can see that we're using UV coordinates, and we just want to take this and add a bit of distortion before it reaches our texture. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a noise node, is the best way to distort this I find, and we're also going to mix these two together, so our noise and our normal texture coordinates, with either vector math, which is the vector approach, or mix RGB, which is essentially the same thing, depending on what. Uh, mixing type you use, but it, essentially it's the same approach. So we are going to add a vector math node since I like the vector approach, and it's going to make a lot more sense for what we're doing, and just add this to the color of the noise texture. Now the factor also works, but the difference is the factor has the same uh, noise on all three x, y, and z dimensions, whereas color has them different, so it really doesn't matter. And you can see this uh, takes our photo and heavily, heavily distorts it, and we can choose how much distortion we want for that. Okay, cool. So you can see it does our distortion, and if we make our scale very big, like something like really big, like 500, you can see it kind of turns into this fine powder, this very blurred out thing, but it's not actually blurring the same spot in the image. To fix this, what we're going to do is we're going to add another vector math node immediately after this, and we are going to add or subtract negative 0.5. So adding negative 0.5 on all dimensions is the same thing as subtracting 0.5. Okay. So now let's play around with the scale and see what we get and bring this down to zero. So at zero, we have something that almost looks like our image with a bit of a displacement. And then as we increase this, it's actually going to start looking like it's just blurred is the trick. And this is a very, very old Blender trick. Really, the reason you subtract 0.5 on every dimension is when you add the noise on every dimension, you're adding some value between zero and one at every point. Now that's going to be random, but on average, it's going to average out to 0.5. Because again, you're adding some number between the interval 0 to 1. So that means on average, to correct this, we're going to have to subtract uh, 0.5 to get this to move everything back to the correct position. That's not going to be perfect, as you can see right here. It's a bit you know, displaced, but on average, it does work. OK, cool. But now we have this thing that blurs it, and we can determine the amount of detail of that blurring with the scale. Again, all we're doing is distorting this very finely, but we can't actually decide how much blurring we want. We can talk about the resolution or how good the blurring is, but not really how blurred it is. To do that, we just do a simple fix. And all we're going to do is we are going to modify this noise texture, and we're also going to modify our initial texture coordinates. So let's do that. So really what we're doing here is adding negative 0.5 on each dimension. And I'm just going to detach that using a combine x, y, z node. So let's put that in here. And we are going to subtract by or add negative 0.5. 
So effectively, same thing. But uh, now we actually want to scale this. So I'm just going to take this, I'm going to duplicate it, and we're going to change it to scale. And right now, it's just multiplying or scaling our vector by one, which means it's not changing anything. And we're going to take this, and we're also going to duplicate it. We are going to duplicate it over for the noise. And the way you want to think about this is the scale is going to affect the kind of the size of our noise or how much this is blurred. And the second scale is also going to fix our uh, displacement that we moved it back negative 0.5. That value is going to have to change by the same amount. So let's add a value node so we can control both of these. So we are going to control this scale and this scale. And you can see that this effectively lets us choose how much blurring we have. So if we have zero, this is not going to have any blurring. You know, it's just going to be multiplying these vectors by zero so nothing changes. But then as we increase this, you can see that it's, you know, keeping everything in the same position, but also blurring it out. So as we get bigger in this value, it's going to blur more. Same for the negative. And then again, this uh, scale right here is going to control the detail. So let's make it blurred and then bring down the detail. So you can see how that works. And now, I mean, really that's the whole tutorial, but we can add a bit more functionality to this by taking everything and turning it into a group node. So let's select, and we can also delete this value since we're gonna do it in terms of group nodes. So let's get rid of that. And then also let's get rid of this texture coordinates. So we highlight everything, control G to group them. And for our group input, we're gonna want to be able to control our scale for both of these again. And let's also control what kind of uh, texture coordinates we're using for our mapping node. So you can see we now have this one node that controls our blurring and we are gonna attach our UV like we did before. And we can control the scale of this now. And that's just the scale of our blur. And if for some reason you also wanna control the quality of the blur, Again, that's the scale of the noise. You can also add another input in here. And you can name these, but I'm not gonna. Okay, so now you have every, pretty much every control you want. You have the, uh, you know, how much blurring you have, how much detail there is for the blur, uh, what texture coordinates you're using. In this case, UV and generated should be the same, whereas object is gonna displace it. You see now we have four copies of it but because we now have this node, we can use it for pretty much anything. So let's do it with a circle. So gradient texture, we're gonna put that in here and we're gonna use spherical. And again, to get the sphere in the center, like I've talked about in a lot of tutorials, all we have to do is use object coordinates so that the origin is at the center. And let's move that there. And now you see we have the circle perfectly in the center and it's a bit blurred out on the edges which is fine, but we want to get rid of that to make sure we can see that it's blurring. So let's add a color ramp node to modify that. So I'm just going to bring this down until it's looking pretty sharp. Okay, cool. Now we just take our blur node and just put it in there. And you can see it's hooked up to the vector socket. And it's going to take a bit of time to actually process all this because it's, a, again, completely procedural. But we can control how blurred out this is. And again, if we zoom in, you can see it's just heavily, heavily distorted. And you, and if you want this blurring to look better, just increase this number. Also, add more samples to your render in the viewport, so, since it will take a bit of time to process. So it works with images. It works with uh, anything else that's procedural, like gradient textures. And there you go. Uh, you now know how to blur procedurally the correct way with a lot of control. So. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I have a Patreon. You guys can check that out, of course. There are benefits, but you don't have to. But uh, there you go. I hope that helped. See you guys.